Donald Trump has been warning us for a long time about the threat posed by China. And now we are learning the hard way that he was right. Too much of our medical supplies and medicine comes from China. And amidst this global pandemic, we now need resources, supplies that we can't even produce ourselves, which has led Donald Trump to invoke the Defense Production Act as a response to the global pandemic. Now, this gives Trump sweeping powers to basically control the consumer market and production in America. And on the surface, it's kind of alarming, this level of power for the federal government. But it's not just something Donald Trump has called for. In fact, Bernie Sanders has also called for the same thing. And now Joe Biden as well. We have overwhelming bipartisan support for a wartime provision. The Defense Production Act was was instituted during the Korean War. We are now seeing it invoked today as the market plunges for the fourth unprecedented market halt. We are in dire straits and now we need some emergency provisions. Normally, I would be very, very reluctant to stand behind or agree with something like this. But I think we're in a dangerous predicament. We don't have the manufacturing in our own country and it needs to change and it needs to change fast. Apparently, Bernie Sanders even agrees. And I think if we can unite left and right on this one, we have a common cause that we must, we must implement. Now, surprisingly, we are seeing MSNBC say that we need to support this president and help him succeed. And CNN's Dana Bash saying this is the leader the people need right now. Not, it's not perfect. There are still many people smearing the president, going after Fox News, playing to partisan politics because we're still in an election season. For me, I'm not a big fan of it. I think we need to move beyond this for now. We can we can stop bickering and pointing the finger at least for the next couple of months because we're facing a serious threat. The market is tanking. It dipped below 20,000 for the fourth time in this past week or so. We are seeing the market stop. It's being halted because the drops are so serious. There's a time and a place for arguing about policy. But right now we can see that we've got leaders, be it Joe Biden, Bernie Sanders or Trump, now saying this is the right move. And I know a lot of people are going to be mad. They don't like Bernie. They don't like Biden. That's fine. We can set these things aside and talk about what we, we uh, what we agree on right now. Let's read this story from The Hill. Trump invokes Defense Production Act as coronavirus response. And then I'll go for, go over what exactly, what, which powers this grants to the president. Before we get started, head over to TimCast.com slash donate if you'd like to support my work. There are several ways you can give. The best thing you can do, share this video. It really does help as YouTube and other networks seek to suppress or lose the ability to actually moderate appropriately, many people are getting struck down, having videos removed. And by, by you sharing this, you overcome much of that burden and help me grow my channel. Let's read from the Hill. President Trump announced Wednesday he will invoke the Defense Production Act, which will allow the administration to force American industry to ramp up production of medical supplies that are in short supply in the fight against the coronavirus pandemic. Hospitals and states have pleaded with the administration for more supplies to protect doctors and nurses on the front lines of this pandemic. There's never been an uh, there's never been an instance like this where no matter what you have, it's not enough. Trump said at a White House briefing with reporters, if we need to use it, we'll be using it at full speed ahead. Many health workers have said they are quickly running out of personal protective equipment like masks and gowns that are crucial to ensuring they don't get sick. Hospitals are also sounding the alarm on the lack of ventilators or breathing machines that are expected to be in high demand as the coronavirus spreads in the coming weeks and months. Andrew Cuomo recently, as I've stated 50 billion times now, says the peak could be in 45 days. Now is the time to act. And I think Trump is making the right call. Democrats in Congress hearing about shortages of supplies from hospitals in their states and districts have urged Trump to invoke the Defense Production Act to direct the domestic production of necessary medical equipment. This would ensure we have the materials we need at the ready rather than wait for the disruptions in the global supply chain to subside. 57 House Democrats wrote in a letter to Trump last week. Supply chains are extremely strained due to tariffs on China, the main supplier of medical goods to the U.S. And the supply chain is strained because we're in the midst of a global pandemic and because China is an adversary. Let's not forget that as well. While the Trump administration has recently taken some action to ease those tariffs, China and other countries are blocking exports of those products as they seek to combat the pandemic. More than 200,000 cases have been confirmed worldwide, 
including 6,500 cases in the United States, according to Johns Hopkins University. Of the 115 people who have died in the U.S., most were elderly and had underlying health conditions. Trump and public health officials in recent days have urged Americans to practice social distancing to slow the spread of the virus. So we understand that stuff. I want to show you a few of the very, very important things. Now, listen, there's a lot of people who don't like Trump and you need to stop and pause for one second. You, you, you don't have to like the man. We're talking about actions to save the lives of Americans, including people you know and likely care about. Bernie Sanders recently called for money to be sent to Americans, which we now may see because even Donald Trump agrees. And in BuzzFeed, they report to address the possible shortage of medical facilities. Sanders proposed calling on the National Guard and the Army Corps of Engineers to expand hospital facilities and build mobile testing centers. He also called for the invoking for invoking the Defense Production Act passed in 1950 during the Korean War in order to guarantee production of necessary supplies like face masks. And as I mentioned earlier, people in media have been praising the president, CNN and MSNBC. And I'll, and I'll read you what they said, but I want to show you what the Defense Production Act is first. This article from Wikipedia, they say the act is a federal law enacted in 1950 in response to the start of the Korean War. It was part of a broad civil defense and war mobilization effort in the context of the Cold War. Now, remember this. This is important. I'm going to show you an op-ed from Tucker Carlson in a second. It's implementing regulations. The defense priorities and allocation system are located are, are, are located at 15 CFR. Since 1950, the act has been reauthorized over 50 times. It has been periodically amended and remains in force. Now, here's what it allows the president to do. The act contains three major sections. The first authorizes the president to require businesses to sign contracts or fulfill orders deemed necessary for national defense. The second authorizes the president to establish mechanisms such as regulations, orders, and agencies to allocate materials, services, and facilities to promote national defense. The third section authorizes the president to control the civilian economy so that scarce and or critical materials necessary to the national defense effort are available for defense needs. The act also authorizes the president to requisition property, force industry to expand production and the supply of basic resources, impose wage and price controls, settle labor disputes, control consumer and real estate credit, establish contractual priorities and allocate raw materials towards national defense. The president's authority to place contracts under the DPA is part of the act most often used by the Department of Defense since the 1970s. Most of the other functions of the act are administered administered by the Office of Strategic Industries and Economic Security in the Bureau of Industry and Security in the Department of Commerce. The Defense Priorities and Allocation System institutes a rating system for contracts and purchase orders. The highest priority is DX, which must be approved by the Secretary of Defense. The next level down is DO, and below that are, un are unrated contracts. These powers are broad, and these powers are scary. I am a very, very liberty-minded individual, and upon reading this, I was actually a bit scared. But I'll be honest with you. The threat posed by China is much scarier, and the threat posed by the current global pandemic and the economic destabilization are also scarier. I can see bipartisan support for this, with many Democrats saying, I'll put it this way, when 57 Democrats, Bernie Sanders and Biden all come out and say, please, Trump, invoke these powers, and they say Trump should have more federal power, that's striking. And you know what? I'm not going to be the one to act like I know better than a bipartisan effort. I appreciate the coming together from people who normally really don't like each other if it means we can solve these problems and stand together as a country. We have a common enemy right now, and for the most part, it's the global pandemic. Now we have a common adversary in China. And we need to start recognizing it's time to make some serious changes. This story from Fox News is from May 30th. Keep that in mind. May 30th. America too dependent on China for its medicine, experts warn. And I'm sure there have been experts warning about this for a lot longer than I've even realized. In a segment a couple days, a couple days ago, I talked about how in September they were warning about this. Well, it turns out I did a little more digging. I found one from May and I'm willing to bet you can go back further and see more of the same. For a long time, our experts have been telling us we have to bring back our production. This has to stop. And unfortunately, we are learning the hard way. 
But now to the Cold War comment, Tucker Carlson's op-ed four hours ago from Fox News, when the coronavirus passes, we must treat China like a dangerous Cold War adversary. And dare I say it, he's right. They've been pressing on the South China Sea. They've been expanding military operations on Pacific atolls, and they have been pressuring the United States and making veiled threats towards us for some time. They have been lying, manipulating in in social media, and we know it. They are a dangerous adversary, and they are just barely stepping on the line. They are pushing our boundaries to see how far we can go. And the last thing we want is war. But China as a country is horrifying. The things they've done and the things they do and the things they're continuing to do or threatening to do. I'm not saying we should ever escalate tensions, but we should certainly bolster our defenses, secure our borders and establish strong manufacturing in this country because it's so easy to screech about the orange man when you are safe. Let's read what Tucker has to say. And then I want to show you what happens when, so, when, when, when you see these people who hate Trump, the orange man bad crowd, when their safety is threatened, we see their tune change fast. Tucker writes for Fox News. So once the coronavirus passes, and thank God at some point it will pass, the temptation will be in the United States to return to where we were before. But we can't do that. There's too much to fix. And we've just learned that. This disaster arrived here for a number of reasons. Some of them we could not control. In the age of air travel, disease will always travel quickly. Pandemics are inevitable. We should accept that. But our responses to them are not inevitable. Nobody forced us to outsource the production of essential medical supplies to China. Our leaders did that, and they did that on purpose. They don't want to talk about it now at all, but they did it, and it was a crime. I don't know if I would go as far as Tucker to say it was a crime, but it was amoral, unethical, and dare I say, to a certain degree, some of it was evil. Sometimes people didn't realize what they were doing. They were ignorant. They saw this bill. They said, free trade. You, saw, you see a bolstering of the economy. It's good for us. And they said, good, good, let's do it. But then you had some people who saw short-term gains, a benefit for themselves, and they sold us out and they put us in a vulnerable position. And for this, I'm talking about some of the stories we've seen recently with academics taking, you know, they're in on the take with China and they're lying to the feds about the money they're receiving because they want the money, they want the power, and they are sacrificing all of us and our security for it. Tucker writes, When the country is well enough to function normally, we're going to have to change that immediately for our own sake and for the sake of our children. We need to move essential manufacturing back to the United States. It's crazy not to. More broadly, we'll need to start treating China like the dangerous Cold War level adversary it has clearly become. Now, a lot of people like to point out that Trump will watch Tucker and then a day later will agree with Tucker. But this opinion and Trump's actions are all coming around the same time. The same time as Bernie Sanders calling for the invocation of the Defense Production Act. I think we can see that we all get the problem now. Even Joe Biden, 57 Democrats. It's about time we got on the same page. And I'm glad to see it happening. This this gives me hope. I know we're in dark times right now. The market, what's happening is scary. People losing their jobs, a potential unemployment rate of 20 percent. But when I see the coming together of conservative pundits, left wing pundits, Trump Democrats, it gives me hope because I've been bullish on, on a, a coming conflict between the political factions. But now we have a common enemy and it's not necessarily China. It's pandemic. It's the weakness of our manufacturing base. Let's read more. Tucker says, don't let them lie to you. This crisis began in China and that's significant. Whether coronavirus escaped from a bio research lab, as independent Chinese scientists have claimed, or arose in a filthy street market selling wild animals for food. Either way, China's third world health practices played a central role in this disaster. The virus grew to a pandemic because Chinese officials silenced health authorities in that country who tried to warn the public about it. Even now, the Chinese government is determined to crush any unsanctioned reporting from the country. He goes on to say something I brought up the other day that they're kicking out American journalists. I'll I'll tell you what, I often find myself agreeing with Tucker Carlson as a fairly moderate person. It's, It's rather interesting. I saw Tucker... I don't know if you saw the debate between him and Cenk Uger of the Young Turks, but Tucker's, he's a good dude. I think he can be a little, uh, uh, he insults people sometimes, but I'm, I have tremendous respect for, for his, his perspective and what he's brought so far to the conversation. Right now, many people are playing a video of Fox News personalities early on downplaying the coronavirus and then later calling out the threat that it is. Notably, 
Tucker Carlson isn't among the crowd because Tucker is he's he's in front of these things very often. And he called this out early so they couldn't really smear him as much, even though they try to get him canceled. But I also want to call out those people that are sh- sharing this video, mocking the, the, the Fox personalities for being late to the party. My motto, my, my, the, the way I approach this is when someone does the right thing, you don't mock them for it. You say, thank you for now doing the right thing. Why would you complain that these people got new information and changed their opinions and then sought to inform their audience? That's a good thing. The best thing you could do is tell them in the future, try and be a little bit earlier. But thank you for doing the right thing. If you want to attack someone who's now trying to do the right thing, you'll only push them away. Which brings me now to Joe Scarborough and CNN, who I believe deserve tremendous respect for the statements they've put out in the past couple of days. In this story from Raw Story, quote, two million Americans could die. MSNBC's Morning Joe explains staggering challenge from coronavirus. I am no fan of MSNBC, and I am typically critical of Fox News to a certain degree. I'm not a fan of the pundit shows on Fox News. I'm not a fan of the pundit shows on MSNBC. Typically, the reporting is okay, but the punditry can be kind of boring. I actually think Fox News has one of the best anchors in the business in Brett Baer, who's a straightforward news guy. Much respect. But MSNBC, man, to see Joe Scarborough come out and and talk about how important it is that we take this seriously and help the president succeed, tremendous respect. You don't have to like President Trump. There are a lot of things about his policies and positions that I strongly disagree with, notably foreign policy, Saudi Arabia. I'm not going to get into it. The point is, now is not the time. Now is the time I agree with Joe Scarborough. Hey, it's not coming for me. You can accuse me of everything in the book, of, of being biased or whatever. I'm not, I'm not here to say this. I'm here to tell you that I am in agreement with MSNBC's Joe Scarborough, that we must make sure this president succeeds now more than ever. MSNBC's Joe Scarborough and presidential historian John Meacham agreed the United States was facing a challenge almost as encompassing as World War II. The Morning Joe host praised President Donald Trump for finally seeming to understand the severity of the threat from the coronavirus, which could deliver grave and unknowable consequences to the nation in the coming months. And that is the right, right way to frame it. If Trump was, was doing wrong early on, if he was downplaying it and he changed his tune, then the president has my respect for now doing the right thing. It was a sobering report that was delivered this weekend. Two million, up to two million Americans could die from the coronavirus, Scarborough said. That's actually, think about it. More Americans than die that then died in World War I, World War II, Vietnam, and the Cold War combined. It's a staggering number. The same thing happened in Great Britain, where they reversed course after finding out that their models yesterday could lead to 250,000 British citizens dying. So there was, without a doubt, an awakening there. The White House is unusually focused and frightened about what is coming. Scarborough said he spoke to high-ranking officials who told him the situation was going to get very bad and it would require a staggering level of commitment from the government and the populace to fight back. This isn't like 9-11. This is like World War II, Scarborough said. It is going to change the way we live as Americans. And the atmosphere inside the White House was very sober. As I hear the president yesterday talking about voluntary measures and then suggesting they may have to lock down so-called hotspots, I was thinking that's actually the best way to go at first because we Americans might not respond as well. Certainly not as well as, let's say, people in China, people in Singapore, to federal government locking things down. It is going region by region, state by state, locality by locality. Meacham agreed, and the policies would likely get more draconian as he expanded on Scarborough's comparison to World War II. The analogy I keep thinking of is less about America during World War II, because though we mobilized, we did it very late. Obviously, after Pearl Harbor and Germany declared war on us, 16 million Americans served, 11% of the male population, 2 million in Europe. I think this is more like England and Britain during World War II, Meacham added. Civilians are actually combatants, if you will, if you follow the analogy. Everybody was at the front, right? Churchill said in the great finest hour speech, you know, let us so conduct ourselves that if the British Empire were to last 1,000 years, men will still say this was their finest hour. He needed everybody because Germany was dropping bombs on everybody. We were living right now. The Luftwaffe is overhead in the form of a pandemic. It requires, dare I say it, Churchill-like leadership. Joe Scarborough said that we need to do everything we can to help support this president succeed. I completely agree, and I will reiterate my utmost respect to Joe Scarborough for this. And Dana Bash as well. 
CNN's Dana Bash praises Trump's press conference, the kind of leader that people need. I'm glad to see it finally happening. Now is the time for a somber and serious attitude. Trump has brought that. CNN and MSNBC agree. Now is the time where bipartisan support is calling for these expanded powers, and even those who hate Trump recognize it. CNN chief political correspondent Dana Bash praised President Trump's press conference addressing the coronavirus pandemic Tuesday, saying he demonstrated the kind of leadership Americans need in a crisis. This is an important thing to note and to applaud from an American standpoint, from a human standpoint, Ms. Bash said on CNN's Inside Politics. He is being the kind of leader that people, that people need, at least in tone today and yesterday, that people need and want and yearn for in times of crisis and uncertainty. Donald Trump is absolutely a wartime president, at least in my opinion. This is, this is something different. As Tucker uh, mentioned, we are facing a serious potential Cold War threat from China or Cold War level threat, but we're still in the midst of the coronavirus crisis that could see up to 2 million people lose their lives. So we absolutely must put down the partisan bickering and stand by the president to the best of our abilities. Now, keep in mind, if he's doing things wrong, he must be criticized. Keep in mind, no matter how much they expand the federal authorities' uh, powers, we must remember these powers need, need to always be kept temporary. And that's what's worrying to me. The Defense Protection Act was implemented in 1950, and it's been used 50 times since then. We can see that when the federal government gains powers, they do not give it up. And that's my biggest fear in all of this. But I got to say, I'm more worried about what happens if we don't bring back manufacturing. I'm more worried about what happens if this pandemic reaches the worst case scenario and what that means for America. So I, for one, you know, I'm a little freaked out by everything. I got to be honest, but I will do what, what, what needs to be done in the face of this threat. If the coronavirus is posing a real threat, let me know where you need me to stand and what you need me to do to make sure we can protect as many lives as possible, not just for Americans, but for everybody. For the time being, our focus is on protecting Americans. So I'm glad to see that people are coming together over this. And it's going to be our responsibility as a community. There are a lot of people who don't view us that way. There are a lot of people who hate this country and a lot of people who view themselves more as individuals than anything else. You're allowed to. You're allowed to hate the country and you're allowed to go off on your own and do your own thing. I won't stop you. I, on the other hand, am looking to a concerted effort, looking at a concerted effort to do the right thing, to save lives and protect this country and everything it stands for. And I completely agree with that. So I'll do what I have to do. And if that means not going out to the movies, hey, man, just let me know. If it means they're going to start changing things in the economy under the Defense Production Act, if it saves lives, I'm willing to make certain I'm, I'm willing to make the sacrifices I have to. There's a certain point at which there's the breakdown in an every man for himself mentality. I've certainly got my van you've heard me talk about. I'll head off and go take care of myself in, in a certain circumstance. But for now, we need to come together. And that's why I really like this story. Trump and Cuomo now buddy buddy in coronavirus response after great talk. Awesome. Last night. Andrew Cuomo calling on Trump, asking for help. Trump saying he's doing a great job. This is awesome, man. It really, really is. In, 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 in such a dark time to see people come together in agreement and to end the bickering to me is, it's, it's awesome. It, it actually gives me hope. I'm not going to lie to you. There are still the same actors, the same people whose whole mission it is to smear and berate and accuse. We are seeing certain nonprofits who I'll leave unnamed target the president. Target right wing media, the Washington Post putting out the supercut, slamming and smearing Fox News. I get it. I'm not perfect either. I've absolutely, you know, I'll throw shade where I think uh, shade needs to be thrown. But at least on this story, I'm glad to see it. To make you understand the importance of the Defense, uh, uh, the Defense Protection Act, I want to show you two things. The MTA in New York, because of the drop in riders, is requesting a $4 billion bailout. They're on the verge of collapsing. They were already facing dire straits. And now because people aren't using it, they can't maintain themselves. They need help. Or how about Boeing? Boeing sees play, uh, their, their shares tank, uh, uh, their shares tank, and now they're seeking $60 billion in aid. Boeing said that the $60 billion in aid would support its 17,000 suppliers and help protect 2.5 million jobs amid the industry's near shutdown from the global pandemic. We are facing an unprecedented crisis, a collapse in the market, industry collapse, fear. People aren't going outside. The restaurant industry, retail shops are being forced to close. It's scary. I don't like the idea of the government having the power to intervene in the, in the market the way they will now. 
But what is the alternative? If, if people do nothing and we see this rapid expanse of this severe pneumonia, I want you to remember something. To those people who still insist this is no different from the flu, Google the videos of people collapsing in the streets. We've seen it here in the US. We've seen it in Iran, in China. We've seen it all over because it's stopping people's ability to breathe. We are seeing a hospitalization rate in New York over 20 percent. We do not have the resources for this, and it's time to act. Bravo to the president. Bravo to the pundits. They have my respect. And I want to see us make it through this one in, uh, in one piece. Once we're done, once we get past this, and we will, we can go back to pointing the finger and accusing each other of being far right, far left, whatever. And, and a little bit in between. I, I, admittedly, we'll still do that a little bit, right? We're still facing an election, so I get it. But at least on this front, I'm glad to see Bernie, Biden, Trump in agreement. And I hope they I hope this is the right thing and hope it works. Stick around. Next segment will be coming up at youtube.com slash Timcast News at 6 p.m. And I will see you all then.